So we have another second wave of, of like, <clears throat> technology blowing up, and people are being harmed. Uh, let's go check this out. It's your boy kicking it with Timmy B. Uh, we got ABC7 uh, with this video. Let's see what they have to say. Let's see what's going on here. It's terrible quality, by the way. Lebanon says 12 others were killed and some 2,800 wounded when the pagers blew up yesterday. Sources confirmed to ABC News that Israel was behind the pagers attack, but the U.S. has not directly blamed Israel. The United States uh, did not know about, uh, nor was it involved in, uh, these uh, incidents. And we're still gathering uh, the information and gathering the facts. And we remain very clear about the importance of all parties avoiding any steps that could further escalate the conflict. The attacks have increased fears that the simmering conflict between Israel and Hezbollah could escalate into all-out war. When the head of Hezbollah said earlier this year that his fighters should ditch their mobile phones for fear of being tracked and continue using low-tech devices instead, he reckoned without Israeli intelligence's high-tech approach to warfare. Today, Israel targeted those devices for a second day. In another simultaneous wave of explosions, hundreds of Hezbollah issue walkie-talkies were somehow detonated, causing more deaths and inflicting hundreds more disfiguring injuries. RT Shout out to ITV News. They got some information about these walkie-talkies going off in Lebanon. I want to hear more about it. This should be day two. This should be day two, right? This is three hours ago. It's your boy kicking it with Timmy B. I'm going to leave this link in, a, in the description below. Let me know what you folks think. Let's get right into it. The team in Beirut was filming at a funeral for some of those killed by exploding pages yesterday when a device in the crowd blew up. Israel's defense minister said the results of the attacks were very impressive and ominously declared a new phase of war had begun tomorrow afternoon uh, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah will announce his response they were burying the dead of yesterday's explosions in Lebanon when the explosions began again <laughs> blasts amongst the mourners just a few meters from scouts preparing to lead the procession for a child of their own age, killed playing with his father's pager. There was panic. Everyone, everyone. A child died because he was playing with the pager. That's not cool, man. Oh, no. That's not right, man. As it became clear that devices were being targeted again. Thousands were crammed into the tight streets of the southern suburbs as Bola's stronghold. But a stronghold breached once again, repeatedly, by Israel. There is defiance here, but even the most devout cannot deny the damage that the past 24 hours have done. This is the greatest security breach in Hezbollah's history, and it is a huge humiliation, tearing through the ranks from junior to senior. <clears throat> these folks found out a way to get right close to these people. Like, it, it, that's something that gets administered throughout the whole organization, right? You have to be able to find a way to communicate, right? And you find a way to be able to <clears throat> manipulate those and to be able to man that's on a whole other level of warfare like this has to be against the geneva convention man this isn't cool bro and these people these folks or these people whoever whatever the this conflict is continuous continuing to escalate and i don't see a good result out of all of this and i feel like the u.s is going to be pulled into this even <clears throat> more let's continue with this Across Beirut and other parts of the country tonight, there have been multiple explosions. By the way, my, my prayers go out <clears throat> to these folks who are just innocent bystanders and all this, and their lives are being turned upside down and taken be because they're in the middle of this conflict. So sad. This time, of radios 
rather than pages. The explosions came in buildings, in vehicles, and in one of the main hospital car parks where an abandoned radio was detonated by the Lebanese army. Yesterday's explosions on Hezbollah operatives in daily life had not only shaken this country, but taken its health care to its limit. This morning, I spoke with Lebanon's health minister as he visited some of the injured. A lot of the uh, international laws, the norms of conflicts, the rules and regulations that should be governing these kinds of conflicts are, you know, are not being followed. And I think that, you know, although some might think that this uh, will break the resolve of the population, in my opinion, it will do the exact opposite. Israel says there is a new phase of this war. It seems it is well underway in Lebanon tonight. Emma Murphy, News at 10, Beirut. Well, what we've learned since yesterday about the pages is that they appear to have been manufactured in Hungary under license from a Taiwanese company. But today, the boss of that company said it had not made them. The remains of the pages which exploded may be small, but the potential consequences from this unprecedented, deadly attack are huge. In February, Hezbollah's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, told supporters to break, bury or lock their mobile phones in an iron box. He said they were more dangerous than Israeli spies because they can be tracked. It was decided to switch to pages. At the Thai pay offices of the Taiwanese electronic manufacturer Gold Apollo, first linked to the exploded pages, there was a firm denial of any involvement. I'm 100 percent sure it's not our product, the company's chairman told police and reporters. He'd said they'd agree to allow a firm in Hungary called BAC Consulting to use the Gold Apollo name on their own pages. Dude, that's not good, man. <clears throat> this is going all the way to Taiwan, and now it's going to Hungary. <clears throat> or it's going to Hungary, and now it's going to Taiwan. Wow, this is, this is deep. But at the Budapest offices, where BAC Consulting is registered, there was no sign of anyone today. The owner is reported to have told the media they don't make pages. What? Experts... <clears throat> that's crazy some so some company these people are going through to go purchase these these pagers are not even like it's not even an actual real registered company you can't even pull up and go find this place if you if you if you pull up you go find that guy and he tells you that's not that's not what he's doing that's Bro, that's scary. These people are buying something from somebody. They have no idea, like, who... That's crazy, Believe dude. explosives were inserted into the pages somewhere in the supply chain. It looks to me as if it is happening again. We are seeing today a second wave of explosions in Beirut and Lebanon. And this time, it appears to be walkie-talkies along with some other devices exploding. So... This suggests Israel has not just modified pages, it has also modified other communication devices. Israel has made no comment on the attacks, but a former head of research and evaluation for Mossad offered her take. It is a combination of a high technology, uh, a very, a very uh, precise intelligence information, and uh, <clears throat> and um, operational capabilities. More than 24 hours on, the attacks continue. So to the question surrounding the methods used and what it means for a region on the brink. Neil Connery, News at 10. Uh, and Emma is live for us in Beirut tonight and John in Tel Aviv. John, maybe we can come to you first. I mean, uh, an extraordinary operation, one might say, and a, a shift in focus militarily. What was Israel trying to achieve and what will be the result? 
Yeah, I think there is a shift in focus. Israel has decided that major ground operations in Gaza are over and they're turning their focus to the Hezbollah problem. There are reports tonight, Tom, that tank transporters are on the roads north. It seems the Israeli government may have decided that at least it wants to give itself at least the option of invading South Lebanon in the pretty near future. Now, that border is quiet tonight, but on an almost daily basis since October the 8th, there have been exchanges across that border. Those exchanges have prevented tens of thousands of people on both sides of the border from returning home. Now, the Israelis have clearly decided that the status quo is, is intolerable. Enough is enough. They want to see Hezbollah either defeated or persuaded to back down. Over the last 24 hours in Lebanon, we've seen two remarkable attacks on Hezbollah personnel via their pagers and their walkie-talkies. I think those attacks those sabotage, that sabotage operation is an attempt by Israel to persuade Hezbollah to back down, to deter the Shia, Shia militia. The Israelis wow. are asking Hezbollah a question effectively. That's crazy. Do you really want to ramp things up against us? Do you want to turn up the temperature to open warfare? Because if you do, you better be ready. You better have eyes in the back of your head because we've got capabilities that you can't dream of. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, John, thank you very much. Well, let's wow. put all that to you, Emma. I mean, it was extraordinary seeing you out in wow. the streets today with that situation literally unfolding around you. What, what was that like and what does it mean for Lebanon, do you think? Well, I think for people who were there, particularly those who were there with children, it was an incredibly terrifying experience and it was more disturbing given what had gone on yesterday when they realized when that first explosion went off that things were being targeted again there was real concern real panic and i think a sense of shock that actually there was a feeling that what had happened yesterday was so shocking with deaths and so many injuries that it wasn't going to be repeated again and then it was and it was done so using radios and even tonight we've had reports of solar panels exploding so it's clear that an awful lot of technology and equipment is being targeted in terms of what happens now well john said there that israel was you know posing a question to hezbollah i guess they have their chance to offer an answer tomorrow and in the coming days we'll hear from hassan nasrallah the head of hezbollah tomorrow afternoon he is likely to try and address this incredible security failing that his organization have faced and continues to face. And he will have to make a really significant speech because he has to appeal to those members, the rank and file, who are currently feeling incredibly exposed and also have significant numbers of family members incredibly badly injured in this situation. So what their answer will be it's hard to know but as much as israel has capability so too does hezbollah and we haven't yet seen that even though they've said it is there and will be demonstrated at some point if they're pushed too far dude shout out to itv <clears throat> excuse me i shouldn't say that folks shout out to itv news very very professional i'm gonna go uh subscribe to you folks i'm gonna go hit the like as well <clears throat> i'm gonna leave this link in the description below very interesting times uh i really i just want to say i hope those folks over there in israel and lebanon can figure that stuff out and stop with this consistent war they have folks on the southern border of lebanon and the northern border of israel there's lebanon there's israel that northern border the southern border part for these folks is just a constant war of like mortar fire and rockets and stuff like that there's folks that are living on that border there um that are both i think lebanese and israeli to my understanding and those folks just want to go back home they're not allowed to um they have to they're forced to evacuate because this is so crazy uh i just want i want all of that stuff in a peace in the middle east folks peace in the middle east that's all i gotta say about that but we'll have more info on the <clears throat> walkie talkie and the pager issue of of this stuff just harming people 
and 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 killing people. I have more info on it for you guys. I have a video about the pager. I'm going to put that link right at the end of this video as well uh, for you so you can go check that out. I'm going to keep you updated. Hopefully there's no day three here. I, f I hope there's no day three. I hope this does not continue. But we'll have to see what happens here because um, the reporter um, woman mentioned that uh, the Hezbollah leader um, is supposed to speak tomorrow. I think that's, yes, yeah, speak tomorrow or Friday. Because it's, you know what I mean? Like the time difference and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be tomorrow on Thursday. I want to see what they, what this individual has to say. I'll report back in. It's September 18th, 2024. I hope everyone enjoyed this broadcast. I'll see you on the next one. Okay.